pick up a piece of burger for the for the crow for Morgan. Do you need it raw? Yeah. Raw and rotten. Really rotten too? Mm-hmm. You scavenger. I for, I don't rather than not getting raw the rotten shit, but yeah, raw, no problem. The most interesting hamburgers I've ever seen. Zoom in pretty close. Journey. He's pretty close. To, through the southwest. We're gonna go see a lot of things. Uh, our, our, so our second stop, first stop is in the desert, is my property, of course. It's my favorite place to go is uh, Mojave. Get to the, the shack again. Every time I go to my property, it's just worse and worse and worse. Uh, this time I walked in there and it was a fucking... <sighs> I'm not sure if you were in there when I was there. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. I did. It looks like a somehow a rodent of some kind. It looks like a gopher. Oh. Like <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Got inside into a milk jug that we were using for water and chewed its way out, sort of, somehow, but it was like halfway out of it. I thought it was a big Your turd. Try when I picked up this thing and it was just Bite dangling it. out like a limp penis. Crows. Uh, I was like, oh god, I thought maybe someone crapped inside this jug. This is some crystal clear looking water, too. I quickly took it outside and I threw it out. Um, there was a pile of stuff. Even though this is in the middle of the desert, sort of, I could tell that there's just been, there's been, um, any life in it. Someone's been squatting in there or something, sleeping. <laughs> Pack up and we head to our next stop after Mojave. We went to Beverly Hills, right? We went to Beverly Hills to see if they were still doing any of that partying that was going on in Beverly Hills. But there was nothing going on when we got to Santa Monica Boulevard. We, we didn't see anything happening. But we didn't look in to see if there was anything happening that weekend either. But I did want to show the guys Beverly Hills. So Joshua Tree was really cool. We get there at night and if you follow me on Instagram, we did post uh, the pictures of Jose at, at Joshua Tree. We didn't get to stay at the camp because it's reservations only, and we found that out there. Honestly, the town, little town of Joshua Tree is one of the coolest places I've ever seen. Second part, twice, looking for him. That was Come on, Luma. But hey, you know, those straws. Another nickname for Choya is attacking the cactus. Morgan was attacking the cactus, but like you're not helping, you're not making this any better. Then we climb a rock. Oh yeah. We hope you'll go on, keep 
telling your rock story. You climb up a rock, and I'm just like, he, no, I don't want to go up there. He doesn't want to go up. He doesn't want, like, me and Jose are super no, stoked no, about this just, giant rock. This is a big, giant boulder. I, I thought you were just going to chill up there. And I said, all right, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab the lighter. We'll smoke this blunt. So I was box. like, oh, he's over there. So I start walking over there, and I see the you and Jose, there. like, searching on the side of the hill and the bird's gone and i'm just like oh don't tell me you lost that fucking bird i just conquered the shit out of that mountain right there lost morgan we went up to the top of it with morgan and he jumped off my shoulder as we were coming down soared around it landed on a rock we scrambled as quick as we could to get him and then looked down for one second and he was gone and then we spent probably a good how long how long do you think we spent just now at least a good 45 minutes all over that thing. I went to the top twice. He circled the whole thing on foot. I went around this whole uh, second part twice looking for him. That was not easy. I found him. Found him in a cave. Just chilling. Just chilling and waiting for me to come get him. My God, my legs are going to be burning tomorrow. I tore that thing apart. <clears throat> uh, Joshua Tree National Park, ladies and gentlemen. Again, staying in the car. Come on, Luma. Something else I, I noticed uh, while I'm here. Can we climb the, uh, this one? The baby one? The baby bra? A lot of masks. One of the bushes there. Can we climb this one? But uh, that's pretty much been a problem everywhere that people go and it's ever since COVID started. Masks and rubber gloves. And... But hey, you know, those straws. Los popotes, that's the problem. Next stop was the Choya Cactus Garden. Fools are tired and they want to stay in the car. So, I'm gonna check out the Choya Garden myself, me and Morgan. Morgan, these are things you don't want to touch. Another nickname for a Choya is Jumping Cactus. So, 
Yeah, no, no fucking joke here. This is unbelievable. I can't believe that there's actually an area where the shit just grows like this forever. Look at this. It just goes out for miles. Nothing but choya cactus. I think it's all the same type of choya too. Here we go into the choya garden. It's not like a faggot. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, someone's gum. <laughs> I don't see why I couldn't grab just a little piece and take it home, put it on my on my property. Here we have a creosote bush. Those are all over my property. This is pretty much like you find these nothing but creosote all over my property, and these are out there, but they're very scarce. The coolest thing I like about these uh, plants that they do make flowers. It's really awesome. Oh, look, here we go. See, look at this. Some old flowers that are pretty much dying now, but yeah. Flowers. Oh, look, there's some pieces right there. Right. Pretty cool, huh, Morgan? Yeah. So Morgan, we stopped at the Choya Gardens, and as I was walking through there, Morgan fucking jumped on one. He just flew off of my shoulder again and landed on a Choya cactus. And so that's how I got my sample. I fucking my my hand got all. I I tried to get it off of him, and it got stuck to my hand immediately. I had to put it between my boots and just yank. God. And uh, I hope it, it, he was not happy. He was literally attacking the cactus. Morgan was attacking the cactus. I'm like, you're not helping. You're not making this any better. Oh, but hey, it happened. <laughs> Next stop was the Salton Sea. Went to the Salton Sea. I, I've been wanting to see this place for a long time. And really surprised that it was such a huge lake in California that we'd ever gone to it. And when we got there, um, <laughs> we ate at this really cool restaurant that was shaped like a boat. Pretty awesome. It's yeah, a slave ship. Like COVID BS, but it was really cool. The outside was all shaped like a boat. And the, the weather was nice. It was warm. America bound. Um, food was great. What do you and call then we drove, pirate? literally, we had to look for camping. And we ended up driving all the way to the other side call? of the Salton Sea. Just to uh, just to find a good camping spot, and we didn't even find it. We just we just stopped right there on the side of the ocean to see, I guess. Uh, as soon as it said that uh, you reached your destination, and then we found in the morning where the camping spot really was. But as we pulled in, as soon as we pulled into this thing, we I was trying to get as close to the water as I could, and probably Salt probably must have been sixteen thousand feet at least from the water. The car gets stuck again. I told the guys, like, before I even tried to move the tire any further, I said, get out and push. They both jump out, and they start pushing, and we're fucking... I didn't even realize this car has economy mode where you push a button and only one wheel turns. Just the front wheel, one front wheel just spins. Oh, that's why the damn thing kept getting stuck whenever we drove into loose dirt, loose sand and shit. These, these modelos out in the salt and sun. Probably been sitting here for a while. How is it, Jose? It tastes uh, really weird. Uh, kind of weird. Yeah. I see. I see what he meant earlier. There's a there's a, a, a flavor to it. Yeah, it does not taste like modelo. Not quite. No. It it almost tastes like. Like steel reserve, but not that yeah. bad.
this is the Salton Sea. Okay, it looks like we're still, well, we're getting there. I still don't see any water. It used to be here. Look how far it is. It's, uh, it's just low tide right now. I bet this dirt is uh, tasty. Tasty. Tastes like good. And, it tastes um, like a my god, we did actually, salt. we didn't see any dead fish, but there was literally a whole yeah, section, a probably, I don't know, <laughs> 30 or yeah. 50 feet, uh, a line <laughs> along the shore of what looked like just dead barnacles and fish bones and scales yeah, that like, we had to walk through. another it road. Like literally walking through snow, and like, I, I had a shovel with me, and I was like digging it, oh, and like, like, seeing how far I could dig. I got like pretty deep. I must have got like six feet. Sinking. No. Not six, maybe like three or four, but. You yeah, got probably two and a half feet deep. At least two and a half feet deep before <laughs> finally he hit something what solid. What is this stuff? But yeah, just like uh, at least that deep in the freaking bone. I just sink into the yard. I was in. Maybe it's fish so, bones. Yeah, I bet you yeah. it is fish bones. It is fish bones. Was it? Yeah, it was. I don't think I touched it. No, I got a little video. I was watching some broken glass, but like a pool of it. Is this a no, that was weird. I was in boots and my feet would just it's they would just bones. go right into the bottom of it. It's like scales. In... Wow. It was really weird. It's kind of creepy. Holy shit. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend swimming in that. And he just goes down. Oh, I think you reached dirt. It was Wow, they weren't kidding. There is an algae plume problem. Well, I mean, what are we digging this for? <laughs> it's like an experiment. I think that's dirt there. You're grinding against? Yeah. Damn, dude, what the fuck? In the morning, this is gonna look so awesome, dude. Okay, we gotta come out here in the morning. Come on. <laughs> Well, here we are, the Salton Sea. It does smell bad. But the water did stink, but not until you got right up to it. When we got right up to the water, like to the water's edge, then yeah, you smelled it. Gross. It smelled really, really funky. And you see like little bugs and shit swimming around in it. Like, there was life. But it was like the kind of stuff you see, the kind of life you see like in sitting wait. stagnant <laughs> water, really. No smell over there. You really can't smell the stench until you get right up to the water. Uh huh. What? Closer to the water, but it's not easy. <coughs> Fucking A. Fuck this. Ugh. Oh, God. It's getting a little wet underneath my boot because <sighs> the hole's been pretty. There's like no footing at all. Fuck this. I got up to the water's edge somewhere. These look like my boot marks. Yeah, I think that's it. Come here. Or don't. Yeah. 
right here. <sighs> as close as I can get to the water. I'll bring some rocks down here. What is that? Water's a little clearer than I thought it was gonna be. But pretty sure that's because it's pretty shallow. As soon as you get just a little bit out there, it's I guess it gets a little soupy. Salt and sea, ladies and gentlemen. Southern California. Not this water, huh? Yucky water. Last free place on earth, my ass. Ah! <laughs> shoes, shoes that grow on trees. City. It's like San Francisco without all the skyscrapers all right. or buildings at all, isn't it? Cool. Slab lows. So that means they have high end parts of Slab City too. That's a huge swamp. <coughs> it's coming. <laughs> Your shirt gets snagged. Bye. <laughs> ah. 
about to try a Calexico torta. Ah! Looks like a torta. Ah! Morgan is fucking hungry. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Walked up to the border, I put my hand on it. You see a, a truck every like 300 feet, 400 feet, there's a border patrol truck there, and they're Night like Galley. constantly looking with binoculars no. yeah, through Galley. the gate. Now I understand why they said that they, they need uh, they need to be able to see through the gate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this guy, remember, he walks up, he sticks his finger through the hole. The border like, wall. Hey, I'm in Mexico. We talked to the guys, there's like some guys working right on the other side. The they didn't patrol. speak any English, and we tried to talk to them as we could. Like, how's like, Mexico? Some kind of shooting yeah. some footage or something. How's Mexico? <laughs> That was fun. They didn't want to get out of the car just in case someone did approach him. So yeah, then we got out of the car, we're driving around, you know, and he rolled up on the side of a, another border patrol and this guy's smoking the blunt. He's like, hey, what's up? Border patrol guys, how you going? How's it going, guys? Yeah, border patrol saw me like, in a car. I was like, I was just holding the blunt out the window, kind of like a cigarette. And Chinatown. I'm pretty sure you can smell it. Yeah, so we had a couple of windows down. We're fucking big, dude. We're cooking that car like a fucking microwave, like sticking pot in a microwave, dude. We're fucking big, and oh my god, it gets way worse when we're in Arizona. Look at that. All right, we get back on the road. The sun is just heading down, like it's just getting dark. We start heading north towards Lake Mead. We're running, we're riding alongside the border of California and and uh, Arizona on the Arizona side, and we come across a. Uh, uh, a border patrol checkpoint. All right. I'm not thinking too much. I, I'm not worried. It's no big deal, right? I, I don't think there's any any issue with what's going on. There's a car in front of us. The guy just says, "How you doing?" All right, uh, you're on your way. We get up there, roll down the window. The dude's just like he looks at me, and I could see there's something. Look, there's a look in his eyes. That something's not quite right. The ID shows my ID, and he's like, and he asks. Have you guys been smoking weed? I, I smell pot in here. And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we were smoking a, while, a few miles back. And he's like, Cook, yeah, um, you know pot's illegal in Arizona? And I'm like, no, I didn't know that. And he's like, yeah. Also, we're federal, so we could still charge you federally. Oh. Yeah, you know, it's it's on the way to being legalized in Arizona, but it's not legal yet. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I want you to I need to pull over here. <laughs> yes, sir. And we, we pull in. And I also had two two uh two eights of shrooms sitting in this in the center console. Okay. The only thing in the center console. Yeah, like the only thing. I wasn't trying to hide it. I, I didn't, as far as I knew, we had no reason to ever get pulled over or ever get stopped by any authorities. We were not hurting anybody. We were just three travelers and our loyal pets heading down the road and spending money locally. We, we, we ate like at McDonald's one time. Other than that, we were doing diners and just, just shopping locally. And so what they asked for is like, do you have any more pot? Do you have any weapons? You know, I was like, yeah, I got my knife here. He's like, oh, go ahead and throw it on the seat there. So I just take it out and I throw it on the seat. They don't, they, and they pat me down, okay, but they don't, they don't grab it themselves. In California, I noticed this. If you say you have a weapon, they say, don't touch it, I'll get it. And they'll, they take it themselves. Now, they're just the guys like, go ahead and grab it, throw it in the seat. I'm like, okay. So I put it in the seat. 
they have a sit down and he asks, do you guys have any more pot? And I was like, no, it's just, just this guy. You know, he's the only one who has it and he hands it to him. Yeah, um, but like, as soon as I say, yeah, I got some, like, this is the visual. I say, oh yeah, I get some pot. I got some pot and, no, I say it like this. Yeah, I got some pot and one cop over, like, to my left, he says, oh, can you give that to us? But while he says that, I'm like reaching in my pocket to give it to them because I was going to give it to them regardless if they asked me or not. I was going to pull it out of my pocket. But as I'm reaching into my pocket, the furthest um, cop, border patrol officer, he, he he stares right through me. You know, he, he just, he looks like, he's like marching right towards me and he sticks out his hand like he's going to get that, the, that weed off of me whether I give it to him or not. But like by the time he gets it, I already handed it to him. But like the way he approached me, he just fucking, like, you know. They were taking that shit serious. They, they put us in a cell. And as yeah, soon as soon as they found us, the, they just said, sit here. We're going to ramsack your car, basically. Right. So right away, one of the first places they check, of course, is the center divide. They don't even have their gloves on all the way, and they all just freeze. And then one of them comes around and he's like, yeah, put them in the cell. And we're in the cell for a while. And as they finish going through the car, they're not, they're not done. They only go through a little bit. One of them comes in, and he's like, yeah, so I just want to tell you guys something, right? You have the right to be silent. You have to do this. You have to do that. Do this are right. Yeah. And, and all of us, like, all of us get the wash over our bodies. Like, ah. Oh. Yeah, dude. I thought in that instant when he, when, because it was, it was the same guy that took the weed from me. The same guy that I was telling you he, like, looked right through me. You know, this guy was the meanest one. Like, like, they were all real cool. But this guy, he was fucking, he was the one hard ass. And, like, he was. He didn't want to answer any of my questions. I only had one to ask him, but he, he just looked the other way. But he read us our rights, like, and then he told us why we were being arrested. And, like, in, the, in that instance, I thought, wow, I just lost my dog. I, I just, I was taking a nap. I thought I lost my crow. I was taking a nap, and I woke up, and they fucking took my dog. Like, that's what I fucking thought. And, like, oh my, I was, like, I was going through so much emotions. Like, I was pissed off. I was sad. I couldn't feel happiness at all. I don't know about these guys, but like, eventually, my main eventually concern the moment us. we rolled up to that border patrol Jose got was fucking, Jose. Jose was put in the next room. They said, "Hey, you come with you come with us," and then they just opened the next cell and they threw him in there. And then we can hear. The it distance. took them forever to do that. We didn't even get there yet. Yeah, like. We're, yeah, you guys were still cracking jokes. You I mean, know? We, I, I tried to be as cool as possible. I'm figuring, like I said, if we can be cool. I mean, that's what they're... If, if we look like a bunch of dicks, a bunch of ghetto punks, you know? Yeah, they're gonna fucking slap us with a book. I didn't know. I, I was just like, dude, let's just... You know, I didn't say that, but I wanted to just be as cool and chill and as uptone as you could possibly be. The only way I was able to do that was just focus on myself. I mean, because we didn't know it was illegal. Otherwise, we wouldn't rolled up through a fucking Border Patrol like Scooby-Doo and the gang just hotboxing a fucking van, rolled down a window, and the dude just gets blasted with a hit wall of dank, you know? I just felt stupid and negligent to not even think about that shit. Yeah, it was the dumbest thing we could have done. Yeah, so after a while, one of the Border Patrol guys comes up to us and he says this. He says, like, all right, um, this is what we're going to do for you guys. We're going to hand you two off to the locals and they're going to deal with you. Your friend over there, we're still going to figure out what we're going to do with him. We're not sure yet. Okay. So then he goes away. <clears throat> that, well, no, no, before he goes away, House Ash is like, what's going to happen? Like, is, how bad is it? And he says, okay, well, um, I think what they'll probably do is write you guys a citation and let you go. But if not, then, yeah, you're looking at, you're looking at, um, you know, jail. You're going to jail. We're going to have to take your pets away from you. We were in a cell literally with a dog and a crow. I mean, a crow. Morgan's sitting on my shoulder the whole time we're in this cell. And... He's like, yeah, we're going to have to take your animals. If no one can come get them, yeah, we're confiscating them. And obviously, we're in another fucking state. We don't have anybody who's going to come get these these animals. So they'll be gone. They'll be bye-bye. And they're like, uh, and we'll, yeah, they'll probably, they might even impound your car. And it was a rental. Talk about bankruptcy. So, okay, that was the worst case scenario. Finally, the cop comes. He talks to all three of us. He gets all three of our stories and everything. He's like, okay, all right, all right. And he was cool from the gate. As soon as he showed up, I could tell that the Border Patrol already talked to him and told him our story and what's the situation we were in. 
So, and he told us, you know, after talking to us, and then Alex asked him again, okay, so like, what's what's the worst of it? And he told us again, he's like, okay, yeah, you know, like, um, worst case scenario. And I, um, I'm gonna, so, so far, your, your stories sound pretty straight. I'm gonna talk to my supervisor. We'll see what he says. And if things are good, I'll write you guys a citation and I'll send you back on your way. Okay. And he's like, but your friend there, he's out of my hands. There's nothing I can do for him. It's up to them. And I could just see, we could both see in Jose's face, just reality kind of wash over his face. Yeah, like he was like, he was staring, he was doing the thousand yard stare. You know what that means? No, what is that? It's people go to Vietnam and they see shit and it makes them just stare off. They go watch the TV, the TV's not turned on, but they're still watching the TV. You know, it's a thousand yard stare. You know, you're just staring off into nothing. You're staring off into the future. Yeah, like things just got real. And uh, they took him away. We were planning to like enjoy the rest of our time somehow. <laughs> us drinking off the night, and so we get the beer and we go back on the highway. We're driving like like 20 miles, and then I was like, oh, we're passing by like Joshua Tree again. We can go to one of these campgrounds. So oh, it was it wasn't Joshua Tree. It was it was Mojave, Mojave National Preserve this time. Yeah, and he's like, all right, sure, and you know we get we struggle to get on the side road, but eventually we get out there. And we were like like 10 miles into the middle of nowhere off the highway and um get to these campgrounds and there's nobody there like and it's like these really like cheesy campgrounds where it's not like you're camping you're like they're like sectioned off part like plots of land you know like kind of yeah it's like parking spots for there's camping lots of yucca everywhere and um yeah we just parked there like the sign said reservation, but we parked there anyway. Yeah, we did. We and didn't like set up camp or anything. We just parked, found a parking space, and sat in the car and drank all night. Yeah, we were just drinking our asses Laughing, off. Laughing, still cracking jokes about what had just happened, even Absolutely though we were still feeling out. devastated. I just threw that egg out for the ravens, and Morgan jumped down there and and got it instead. He was not afraid of the ravens. <laughs> the ravens are so confused. Like, a big flock of ravens out there. What do I do with right? this guy? Like this, uh, They're so gentle. Like, uh, truck stop diner. He kind of wants yeah. to take it. They know he's There's under. Like outdoor seat and There's like two tables. But they don't know what to do. They're it's just confused. There. There's like a flock of uh, ravens like on the telephone wires like up in the tree. And Morgan's gonna get that one too. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, get the fuck out of here. The human gave it to me, not you, you fucking, you fucking peasant. Get out of here. You lowlifes. Street dwellers. I'm the one with the fucking poop suit, not you. I'm the one with the outfit. <laughs> he didn't finish it. He was so cute. He didn't wake up <laughs> <Little birdie. laughs> One lone crow holding off a <laughs> conspiracy of ravens. Hey, who taught you those those manners, huh? We're sitting at the table. No no horseplay. What? What? You're grounded. <laughs> I can't stop recording this. You got the little fuckers up there on the mini car. That was so amazing. Morgan was just not afraid at all. He's just like, yeah, I'm just gonna go right up to them and get get what I think is mine. <laughs> When he would throw something they or are. This is something. definitely the friendliest ravens I've ever seen. The ravens would seen. try to get it, but if more, the ravens would just walk up, like, I'm going to get it, the, the ravens would give him space. They'd back up, let if him was, take it. If it, was, if it was a crow, no crow would do that. Like, And if they did, it would be to, to make either an assault or something. You know, like, more, more the crows are more likely to fucking hurt this thing than they are to just observe it like the ravens did.
Anyways, thanks for watching. looking for him. That was not easy. I found him. Found him in a cave. Just chilling. Bye, Luma. But hey, you know, those straws. Let's put one of those. Another nickname for a choya. Attacking the cactus, Morgan was attacking the cactus. The way could not help.
try getting us now, motherfucker. Woo! Can't catch me now, bitch. Ha <laughs> ha.